no we're not going to have that song we're just going to go stop and we're going to you Peter now and you're back with Peter Dunn here on 1 FM, and I did promise you a special surprise at the start of the show and we have one in the form of DJ Tweeney who of course is one of Australia's top DJs who's actually here in New Zealand at the moment uh, and uh, she's taking time out from what seems to me to be a pretty hectic schedule. She's sort of commuting back and forth across the Tasman to talk to us this morning. Tweeny, good morning and welcome. Hello, how are you? Good, how are you? Yeah, I'm good. Good. <laughs> now you're, you're sort of um, all over the place at the moment, aren't you? You're performing here and you're performing back on the Gold Coast and uh, all over the show. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah. I'm flying back and forth every weekend. Um, I'm back in Australia during the week and then flying back to New Zealand on weekends. So, so it's pretty hectic. How long are you going to keep that up for? Oh, what was that, sorry? How long are you going to keep that up for? Um, well, I think this is the last weekend I've been here, three or four weekends yeah. in a row, and this is the last weekend I'll have a few weeks break, and then probably do another round of gigs uh, and stuff over here mm. again. <laughs> right. And how do you find New Zealand audiences to, uh, compared to Australian audiences? Do they, do they react to you as well as they do in Australia? Yeah. It's gone really well. Um, everyone's been really, really lovely. So I've really enjoyed my time here. It's a bit colder, but... <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes. We're in the middle of summer. This is no, that's not true. Is it? is, <laughs> it's always like you know, you know, on the Gold Coast right now, I could probably go and tan on the beach. That's the difference. In the yes, weather. we we know, and we don't want to be reminded. But but for a lot of New Zealanders, they will have seen you, of course, in the GC. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah. How did yeah. you find that? Oh, sorry, what was that? How did you find doing the GC? Because it's been quite an interesting and controversial program here in New Zealand. A lot of people have watched it and talked about it and argued about it. What yeah. did you think about it? Yeah, yeah, I've seen some posts. And yeah. I've seen a fairly mixed response. Yeah, was it good to do? Good to be part of? Yeah, it was a great experience. I've never experienced anything like that, um, you know, actually filming a TV show and all that jazz and having cameras on you. Yeah. It's definitely <laughs> got to be up there with some of the craziest experiences in my life. Now, you're an experienced performer. You've done a lot of DJ work. I was just looking at your sort of list of places you've performed and played over the years, both in Australia, you've been in the Solomon Islands, Papua New Guinea, Indonesia, uh, New Zealand, all over the place. And yet you still yeah, found yeah. doing re reality TV a bit of a, a, bit of a, a, a surprise? Um, yeah, it wasn't ever a route that I planned to take. Um, <laughs> I think only because they, they kind of really asked me to be on the show and a few times and so I eventually um, agreed to do it. Um, it's not something I plan to do but I think it's been good in terms of introducing me as a person to the New Zealand audience and stuff like that and giving me the opportunity to play in a lot more places over here than I think I would have otherwise. Right, now yeah. we often think that you know New Zealand and Australia while well, we're we're sort of not that different, really. It's a bit colder here, but we've, we're, we're, we're nicer people. Uh, but <laughs> you, you, you've been playing here on both sides of the Tasman. Do you, um, are we the same or are we different? Um, I think for the most part, um, people have been pretty much the same. Everyone's been really nice. Um, I think that's all just really, everyone's been really, really lovely. So I've just really enjoyed myself. And, um, yeah. Yeah, yeah, I've noticed on your Facebook page, everyone going, well, you're coming to this town, make sure you come and see us, come and say hello to us. <laughs> yeah, it's been pretty hectic. I'm trying to get to as many places as I can because I don't really want to let anyone down, but um, it's, it's difficult. Like, I've, got, I've got two flights today, so, yeah. So, you, you, now, you're, you're just about to go somewhere at the moment, aren't you? Oh, sorry, what was that? You're just about to fly off somewhere at the moment, aren't you? Yeah, I've got to fly into Auckland to and Auckland? then from Auckland into Wellington. So. so Auckland this afternoon, then back to Wellington this evening because you're, you're performing this evening at the Lotus? Yes, yes. Lotus Room. Lotus Room, oh. yeah. 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 So you've got a hectic time and then you can go back to Brisbane tomorrow, put your feet up and uh, relax for a while. Is that right? Hopefully, no. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. Oh, well, look, thank you very much for talking to us this morning. It's been great having you on the show. Good luck, uh, Twenty, for the rest of your tour in New Zealand, and hopefully we'll see you back here before too long. That's all right. Thank you so much for having me. I really appreciate it. My pleasure. Thank you. That was DJ Tweeney, who was uh, one of the great... Uh, well, she was originally an R&B 
um, yeah, DJ in that. Australia, and she's now developed her own special style and tone. And just looking at the places she's been and performed, uh, it's really a breathtaking list. She's done all sorts of things, support acts, she's been a DJ for after parties, she's been at various... Um, other big events um, alongside world-renowned DJs, festivals, <laughs> plus performances all over Australia and, as no I said before, Asia oh, and the yeah, Pacific. So great to have her on the show so this morning tonight. and hopefully we'll hear and see more okay, of her on the GC and yeah, elsewhere, DJ hey, Tweeney, uh, here at One Eyed FM. Now, I'm just getting very local for the moment. There are a couple of big local events on this okay. weekend. Mm -hmm. um, the market 6035 that we spoke about last week is on as we hey, speak at the Nio <laughs> Town okay. Hall. This Thank is a local okay. market oh, organised by uh, Carolyn Usher, who just decided it was time to do something a little bit big in the fundraising department. And um, there's obviously, I went past there earlier this morning, a big crowd of cars around, and I think it's going to be a great day. If you want something a little bit more cerebral, a bit more leisurely, go out to Tawa Junction, the Tawa Rotary Book Fair. Book Fair began at 9 o'clock this morning. I couldn't move for people there when I was in there earlier on. There's all sorts of bargains even after I've been through. Still there, lots of people, great sausage sizzle outside. They're there till about four o'clock this afternoon, and I do it all again from nine till four next Saturday at Tawa Junction. So a lot going on, some really good bargains if you want to go and get them at the Tawa Rotary Book Fair at Tawa Junction. Now back to our messages, 478 the number to call. Uh, or you can email us on oneidfm.co.nz forward slash chat and go to the oneidfm.co.nz website and look at One-Eyed FM TV and you can view us live as we speak. Now, let's go to Lisa who wants to ask this question. Many local sporting and cultural clubs and organisations get funding from local pokey trusts. Yet I understand there is a bill before Parliament to take that power away from the trusts and to give it to local government. All that will mean is that local groups will miss out and probably will not be able to carry on. I don't know what's going on. Oh yes, the office upstairs told me to stay in front of the mic and I must. It's a bad fault of mine, so I'm going to do that right at this moment. Anyway, back to Lisa's message. She says all that, that, that taking the power away from... I'm going to lose this in a minute. <laughs> all that taking the power away from uh, the trusts and giving it to local government will do this mean that local groups will miss out and probably not be able to carry on. That's of extreme concern, so what are your thoughts? Will this bill become law and can you stop it? Uh, Lisa, it is of extreme concern. I think it's a, a dangerous and backward move. I understand the reasons why it's being promoted, but I think they're simply wrong. Uh, I'm not in favour of the bill uh, and I'm going to vote against it and I'm pretty confident that when the crunch comes, the numbers will be there to stop it. This is the old story. There have been some trusts who have abused uh, their powers, but the vast majority act sensibly and responsibly and a huge number of community organisations benefit and we've just got to stop getting sidetracked by the minority and looking after the interests of the majority in this area. So absolutely um, opposed to it and proceeding any further and I'm pretty confident that it won't happen. Now on to Keith who raises the issue of flexi superannuation he says your flexi superannuation idea is still attracting attention. Which parties are in favour of it? And what happens next to put it into place? Would you still retain the age for New Zealand superannuation at 65? Well, Keith, let me take the answers in reverse order. Yep, 65 would be the base age for New Zealand superannuation, but you could take a reduced rate if you chose to take it from the age of 60, or a higher rate if you chose to defer it until you were 70. Uh, what happens from here? Uh, there's been quite a bit of discussion informally around Parliament. It looks at this stage as though... Uh, in addition to United Future, the Labour Party, the Maori Party, uh, the ACT Party are all in favour of it. I think the Greens might be, although I just don't know for sure. I'm not sure where New Zealand First stands. And National is a little cautious. So there's probably close to a parliamentary majority for it. What will happen next is that next year, <coughs> date to be decided, but during the course of next year, a government discussion paper setting out how a flexi-super scheme could work will be released for public comment and for public study, 
and then depending on the outcome of that, the government will make a decision about how to proceed. So that's where we are with Flexi Super, Keith. It is a really good idea. The more people that speak about it and talk about it, the more attention and excitement it achieves. And I've even had some interest expressed to me from overseas about the concept as well. Other countries trying to work out how they keep their uh, pension schemes affordable and uh, fair to the people that they serve. Now, Fred. Uh, Fred says you wrote on your website recently implying United Future was a Liberal Democratic Party. Are you serious? I've always thought of you as a bunch of right-wing conservatives. I think that's the tone I'm supposed to read this in. So maybe there's hope for you after all. Well, I am serious, Fred. Always have been a Liberal Democrat. Always have believed in those principles of a free and open economy where people make their own choices, but a social environment where the state is there to provide support to those who are most in need and to encourage people through difficult transitions in life and to support them making the best of things the way they want to, to support their lives and their values and their freedoms. And uh, that's absolutely where I've stood. Always will stand there and um, have no plans to move away from that. So, if that's not what you wanted to hear, I'm sorry, but it's the truth. Now, time for us to take another break, and uh, this is going to be a real guesstimate here. I'm just not sure who we're going to hear from next, but you'll enjoy it anyway, because it's One Idea FM that always plays great music. Hits of the 70s, 80s, 90s, and today, here on One Idea FM, I'm back after this example. <laughs> sorry. You're going to lose what? <laughs> <laughs> I need to be tied in front of the microphone. I might well swing this one around. Yeah, no, that's all right. I'm just going to discipline microphone. myself. Yeah, I'll get a bungee cord. <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> Headless chickens, cruise Headless control. Chi yeah. Sorry, I, I just got Chris on um, telling me to tell you to speak up. Well, he's telling me to put the microphones up, but I've got them just about at hand. Yeah, Chris, we're working on it. <laughs> we, 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 we've got the gaffer tape out and we're actually gaffering Peter to get the microphone at the moment. Yeah, yeah, yeah no, so we're working on it right now. <laughs> okay, Chris, thanks. That's in Chicago. Mm. Oh, so he's listening or watching? He's listening. Just going to string mm. the TV. I've got the TV going all right yeah. now because I've got the volume control yeah. up here. So, um, but we might just give you a better microphone. Well, we might just have both bloody microphones going. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> you feel, feel important now. Watch it. Put that one just over the thing, yeah. That one would go up a bit. Yeah, that should be right. Yep. Okay. 